All right, has everyone clapped? Yeah, record and do your little clap. And I'm British apparently now. Was that you being British? Yeah, that's not how I actually sound. I can do a British accent. Record and do your little clap. Record me, do a little clap. I've already done my clap. Record me, do my little clap. <laughs> you're like trying to sound like Essex. Like, yeah. yeah, you're like really Essex. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. go with my girls. No. All no. Right. <laughs> no, you you lost it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> how come? How come? How come I can't achieve? How come I can't achieve? I'm rolling up my sleeves. I'm rolling up my sleeves. Oh baby, I believe these guests can help. Cause I can do it by myself. I wanna just before we get started, big, big, big shout out today to Helix Sleep. Take their two minute sleep quiz and they'll match you to a mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. Find your perfect mattress at helixsleep.com slash how come. Also, thanks to Dame Products for supporting How Come. Dame is a women-founded company making toys for sex. For 15% off your first order, go to dameproducts.com slash how come. Yeah. Um, how would everybody like to be introduced? Just fucking ledge. What you mean, like name, pronouns? Full name that you'd like me to say, or if you don't want full name, it could just be first name. Everyone already knows my full name. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I'm saying Gabriel because I, I don't know. People with my last name is like a thing. Yeah. Like, if you can say it right, then you could say it. Wait, <laughs> Chichester? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Before we start, Rim, yes. you saying my name is still my text tone. Every time I get a text, Aww, it's you saying Robin my name. Kennedy. Literally. So I had to like crop out Pam's name and then crop out Roxy's name after just to get mine. And it's like Pamela Goldberg rather than Kennedy. And you like really spiked. It's great. It's I can't beautiful. believe you guys were in the same announcement too. Yeah. Pam, me and Roxy. All joined the Patreon at the same time and got the same thank you shout out. I have to start doing those again. So we're all like. Roxy yeah. rules. She does. Her cats are the best. Does she have good cats? She does. She's got another one called Forest. Um, okay. 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 I'm nervous, you guys, but I'm excited. Are you nervous? I'm just really worried I'm going to have a coughing fit halfway through and like chunny on the floor. I mean, throw up on the floor because that's what? Kiwi word. Chunny? Yeah. Chunny. Oh my God. Wait. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about this. But speaking of Chunny, I threw up in my mask on the plane ride over here. Uh, no. <laughs> Rim. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. I, that um, is not ideal. I know. We were landing and um, like th- I never get up when the seatbelt sign is not on or you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like when it's not allowed because I'm like a loser. Right. <laughs> and so like I like threw up in my mouth and I was like, I can handle this. I'll just swallow it. And I did it like twice. And then I finally was like, this is disgusting. And I just like threw up in my mask and had to run back. You know, they have like vomit bags, bags. in this. They didn't. Really? Yeah. Good. Maybe it's that's like a, that's a right. COVID thing that they wouldn't want you throwing up around other people. But How, if, you get, if you get <laughs> sick so on planes. having bags is going to stop you from throwing up. <laughs> I don't. No. That sounds like that like, sounds like Trump's. If we test less people, there'll be less cases. <laughs> if we don't give you, sounds like I don't bags, know, you're you not guys. Throw up. I I don't work for Alaska Air. I just use them <laughs> to get here, mm-hmm. um, and I throw up in my mask on the way. But you guys, hello. This is me, hello. Remy Casimir, coming to you from my nanny's apartment, which I guess is my apartment now. Um, In New York City, I am not proud of this travel, but um, Grace has been being taken care of of my friend for like four months and she can't do it anymore. It's not fair to have her keep Ubering back and forth from her house to here to just, I mean, not just feed a cat. She's a glorious cat. Um, But yeah, she wants to be able to go at least somewhere else for the summer or quarantine, wherever she wants. You know, it's, it's not fair. So Ben and I came back. We initially were going to drive back across the country, but then we got in that car accident and his car is still in the shop. So we flew. I am not saying to fly. Don't fly. I am very embarrassed by myself. Coming home for my cat during a pandemic is the whitest thing I've ever done. I can truly say that. But here, 
And this week is going to be really fun because we are talking to two How Come team members. One of them you might already be familiar with. Uh, She writes your polls. She's got my same initials. She's from New Zealand. You guys, welcome the wonderful, legendary Robin Kennedy. Hello. Oh, God, that sounded so Kiwi. (laughs) Hello. Hello. Um, um, how are you, Rob? Oh, shattered, fast asleep, you know, going through it, <laughs> living yeah, through the pandemic, yeah. but surviving. Yeah. Uh, I, why do we, why do we ask how are you anymore? But honestly, like I kind of ask cause I'd like an honest response. Well, it's tough. That's, that's the truth. Life is tough. Yeah. And coming all the way from Israel. You guys don't know him yet, but you're about to. He is so cool. He also started as a companion. Now he is doing research and producing How Come. You guys, welcome Gabrielle Chichester. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. What's good? Excited to have you here. I'm excited to be here. We had initially planned on having a different type of episode but I think this is going to be a good one because we're doing companion submitted questions and getting to know you guys a little bit more and also getting to know our team a little bit more. So, Gabrielle, would you like to give a little introduction about yourself and how you're going to be able to help our sweet companions as well? Sure. I still sort of feel like I'm talking to a celebrity because hilarious <laughs> low-key hilarious <laughs> okay cool but, I feel like you're a celebrity to me thank you um yeah so I live in Israel mm-hmm. and I am from the states originally moved here Maryland from New York City. gang gang you know <laughs> DC Maryland shout out to the DMV um and I moved here from Brooklyn shout mm-hmm. out Crown Heights yeah so I'm a sexual wellness educator Yep. Um, and yeah, I work one on one with folks um, to basically uh, work on challenges they might be having in their sexual lives, mm-hmm. with their sexual identity, with partners, with mm-hmm. themselves. Um, <laughs> and yeah, now I'm producing this podcast, which is and so funny to me. <laughs> like Robin, a longtime listener, longtime fan. Was Hell yeah. Re- Reaching out, um, also a, a member of the Loyal 42 of <laughs> Remy's Comedy Club. And like, I've always said those are the best people, the people who like the comedy and the it's sexual true. wellness education. But Gabrielle and I were talking and he pointed out, he's like, I miss the facts. <laughs> like, and like the research and the Charlotte element and like, who doesn't miss Charlotte? Like, I... I'm crazy I and without fact she 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 comes on every so often now but she just she's in business school she's not going to be able to devote the time and she's the busy. ridiculous effort that she would want to um and so she's we're, booked and busy she's booked and busy and so we're lucky to be able to have really supportive members of our community community <laughs> uh, <laughs> who swoop there. in and go hey rem maybe a little more research Happy to lend a hand. And so now we have Gabrielle. Yay. Yay. Yeah, I'm so excited. So excited. So excited. So we asked you, ask us anything. Ask the team anything. Ask whatever questions about sex, love, life, whatever. Um, And here are the things that you asked. So Rob, you separated these into categories, correct? I did. I did. So I'll just go through and we can just answer as many as we can. Um, okay. So the first one. Sex and sex tribe. Yes. First category is. Sex and sex tribe. Oh, I feel tribe. like we're at a ball. The category is <laughs> sex <laughs> and sex drive. <laughs> okay. Um, do you know anything about having sex while pregnant? Ooh. Ooh. Sex while pregnant. Yeah, I feel like yes, that's kind of like I do a question know. lots of people have. A lot, a lot. Yeah. Not that I've ever been pregnant, nor could I ever be pregnant, but I do know a thing or two about having sex while pregnant. Um, cool. I'm a yoga teacher, and sometimes I work with 
prenatal uh, women, and that is super fun. And it's sort of the same principle. Yes, it's perfectly fine and normal to have sex while you're pregnant. In fact, you'll probably even be wanting to have sex more because of yeah. uh, your heightened hormone levels and things like that. Um, the short answer to this is basically as long as you are not having a high risk pregnancy for whatever reason, uh, sex should be fine. Unless your physician has specifically told you not to have sex, then you're fine to have sex. You will start to realize, obviously, as you progress um, in your pregnancy, that certain things are going to become uncomfortable, obviously. Um, so the rule for pregnancy is if it feels good and it doesn't hurt and it's not putting you at risk, then it's Do all it. good. You're not going to hurt the baby. And you don't the mind so- your baby having dimples. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a myth. Everybody thinks the baby's going to poke in the face, get a little doom. <laughs> not true. Not true. But uh, yes, your body is intelligent. The cervix is closed. You're not going to hurt the baby. Mm-hmm. Uh, if anything, you need that strength training for labor, honestly. Also, I feel like a lot of people like still just when you hear the word sex, you're thinking like, penis and vagina intercourse like how much sex does not require insertion yeah exactly Exactly. you know like masturbating constantly i intend to if i'm ever pregnant i imagine that would be like harder over your belly you know i mean you can get into like a little happy baby pose Ooh, get creative that's the other thing about for you having sex while pregnant right you get creative yeah yeah it doesn't have to just be P and V penetrative, mm-hmm. like there's mm-hmm. so many other things you can do, and anal. It's safe. Anal. Exactly. Mm. Um, okay, so keeping with the sex and sex drive, um, there are a lot of questions regarding libidos and mismatched libidos. So this one is uh-huh. yes. always. My always. partner is asexual. I have a crazy libido, but don't want to split up from my partner. She's the best help. Oh, so, that's really. S- yeah, love. I actually I know somebody who is in that exact same um, predicament uh, about two years ago. And he was like, I've been with my girlfriend for such a long time. I love her, but she's asexual and like I'm having a really tough time. Um, I will obviously let you respond to this, too. But what I um, told him, I was like, okay, well, this needs a conversation because, right. um, you have to see what will make her happy, what will make you happy and what will make you both uncomfortable. So yeah. does, totally. or does her being in the room while you masturbate, does that make you guys comfortable? Does you having an open relationship make her uncomfortable? Or is that something that she would see as like, no, this is not an area that I'm trying to explore so but i understand that you yeah. need to um Gabrielle, i think it what just would you say? needs a lot of conversation yeah yeah i think you hit the nail on the head i think my first question would have been like did you know or did she know that she was asexual before you got into a relationship and like if so was there communication around that like what the dynamic of the relationship would look like but no remy you you hit it on the head um yeah you just have to talk about what makes you comfortable what works for both of you um Mm -hmm. and but even like if she hadn't told him like i think it's fine because yeah she could be telling him with other cues you know like they've had six dates and they haven't yeah right yeah Yeah. you know and and that's it's just telling you like at at one point oh i'm slower and then it's like no i don't really like i we need to have an asexual episode for sure i um I feel like growing up, a lot of us heard about asexuality just in relation to plants. Yeah. Also, I think it's important to say to people, um, because some people I'm sure might be wondering, well, if she's asexual, why is she in a relationship? Um, she still likes people and she well, loves right. love. Yeah. So, yeah. so this is the thing, right? So, uh, But a lot of people don't know this, right? That like asexual people can still experience romantic attraction. Some of them don't, some of them do. And everybody's different. Right. And so maybe she experiences romantic attraction and mm-hmm. doesn't want the sex part, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think it's yeah. just a conversation that you have to have at one point or another in the relationship and figure it all out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not sustainable without a conversation. Yeah. But also I think saying like, well, why would she want a relationship? It's like, would she not want friendships too? 
Like, yeah. there's mm-hmm. more there when when people say that a relationship is just about sex. I'm like, no, that's a sexual relationship. Yeah, yeah you exactly. know. But like, there are so many other things that I would assume I brought to the table and my partner brought to the table than just sex. Than just you know? sex, oh, yeah. 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 Like that's just like a companionship and support and uh, similar interests and you know like you know all that stuff, all the things, Um, all the things. I yeah, (laughs) going on with the libido. There's the other one. I'm having a moment. Just give me a second. I've got cramp in my my calf and I can't move my leg. Oh no, (laughs) the Charlie horse. Oh no. Oh jeepers, that really came out of nowhere. Okay. Right. Sticking with the libido, there's another one that is, is it okay to experience zero libidos after months of sexual inactivity? Inactivity. In a- months of sexual inactivity. Uh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the point? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but I mean, no, so no. low libido, low sex drive can be caused by like any number of things, right? So yeah. like if you're stressed, in your normal life, right? That's obviously going to bleed over into your sexual life, your relationship, your professional life, your friendships. Um, So if you're going through something like depression, anxiety, anything like this that could be affecting your sex drive, um, it could also be hormonal. um, If you feel like it might be... Sorry, someone's opening the door. (laughs) Um, If you feel like it might be hormonal, I would definitely like suggest talking to your physician, uh, checking that out. Uh, sorry, wow. I have to do all of that again. No worries. I'm going to close it, actually. I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. do my answer, too, though. Okay, um, great. I think it is A-OK. I mean, like, if you don't have a problem with it, everything's OK. Like, what do you mean, is it yeah. OK? Like, no, is anyone going to judge you for it? I hope not. And if um, they do, like, like what? Why are you to? asking how much I'm masturbating and fucking? Like, go worry yeah. about yourself. But also, <laughs> totally. like... Like, you know, it's only not okay if it's not okay for you. If you're yeah, like, exactly. oh, fuck, like, I have no libido and I'm mad about it, then maybe there's a reason and we can look into those things. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But if you're fine with it. If it's not driving you crazy, then it doesn't need to be worried about. A lot of yeah. clergymen strive to have no libido. Yeah. You know? Like... If that's what you're trying to do, if somebody wants to be celibate and you want no libido, that's great. But yeah. if you want but if a libido you want and you a don't, libido, yeah, then that's a whole different story. Then, Gabrielle, what are the things that might be going on? So, uh, look at the state of your mental health, honestly. Mm-hmm. What's going on around you? Are you super stressed at work? Are you having mm-hmm. stress in your relationship? Are you going through depression? Um, any sort of thing like that. Um, Often people experience low low libido during grieving Mm -hmm. as well. It could be any number of things. And like I said, you know, it could also be something related to your hormones, Mm -hmm. right? Um, Yeah. If you feel like something is off in your body um, or you, you know you're not having any sort of mental health challenges at the moment, then like it's worth checking in with a physician. Again, if it's bothering you enough. Yeah that you want to talk to someone yeah if it's not then just enjoy all your free time and read some books yeah exactly do something else like libido always keeps me from being productive (laughs) yes oh my god this morning i just went through like so i'm really happy to be like reunited with all of my toys here (laughs) but they're all dead and so like all no was going through like "Mm, no mm, no mm, no mm, no (laughs) (laughs) just charge them all up Get them yes, all I ready would, to go. I would love to get rid of my libido, but hate to see it. I don't know. Um, do we have an? I think we answered that one. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I reckon. Do we want to okay. stick no. with the sex and sex drive, or like change it up a little bit? Uh, let's keep let's going. Let's keep going. All right. Um, so the next one is: as a guy, I often have trouble finishing. I think it might be because of stress, but I have plenty of drive. So that's sort of like got the libido, Mm. got the stress. I just wrote an article about this. Oh, true tea. Last week. Amazing. Tell us. Yes. So um, I also had and sometimes still have the same problem 
actually. And what it's most likely related to is performance anxiety. Mm. Uh, performance anxiety is basically all the pressure that we put on ourselves, whether it be consciously or subconsciously, about how we're supposed to be in bed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is all bullshit, by the way. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> uh, all these ideas about uh, pleasing our partner, our self image, right? Um, and so when you have performance anxiety, um, particularly in people who have a penis, it can look a couple different ways. So uh, you might be having trouble getting an erection because of your performance anxiety. You might have delayed ejaculation, which is what this is called, not being able to ejaculate mm -hmm. um, or having trouble ejaculating. Or you might even have premature ejaculation, meaning you are ejaculating faster than you'd like to be. And a lot of that is related to being like really in our heads and not in our bodies. I can definitely mm -hmm. speak for myself. Some of the things that I do to help cope with performance anxiety, um, focusing on the senses. So if it's not getting up or you're not mm. ejaculating, do something else. Really hone in on your breath, mm -hmm. feeling your breath in the body, feeling the touch, the taste, the smells of sex, um, and just focus yeah. on that. Things will work as they need to. Also, just um, improving your relationship with yourself. What are you doing to get in your body outside of sex? You know, are you exercising, dancing, doing yoga? Like, how are you feeling your body and your sensuality even when it's not coming to bed? And that mm -hmm. will yeah, for sure. help you when you are having sex be more in your body as well. And then also mm -hmm. just speaking kind words to yourself, honestly. Yeah, like, being sweet. <laughs> be nice enough. to yourself. It's okay. You're also, like, it's not all about ejaculating. Like, it's not all about orgasm. Also, and it should, it's important to say that ejaculation and orgasm are not the same thing. They yeah. usually happen around the same time, sure, but they're not the yeah. same thing. So for myself, I know, like, when I'm having this issue, I usually have multiple orgasms still, even if I don't ejaculate. Oh, so that doesn't mean fun. that the sex is bad. Mm. Yeah. You it just does. don't have the Elmer's glue at the end, which who needs it? <laughs> exactly. It's a little bit yeah. cleaner and less sticky. If we're not trying to make something, who needs it? Right. Truth. It's not all about that. It is nice to ejaculate, but it's not all about that. I just want to see you quiver. <laughs> <laughs> that still happens whether you ejaculate just or not. Quiver. Just quiver. Um, no, but like literally it's, it's interesting from the guy perspective because it's like you have this proof of concept that you finished, yeah. right. but it's not actually true. Like I really right. didn't understand the disconnect between orgasm and ejaculation until I think it was like Alex on the third episode when he was like, yeah, I used to yeah. orgasm, but not come. And I was like, what? I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. What are you talking about? You can, you can also come without orgasming. Yeah, Two. well, a lot of women write in or vulva owners write in and they're like, oh, yeah, I squirted with a toy or whatever, but like, I don't think I came. And it's like, exactly. okay, cool, but like, you'll get there. Right, right. Yeah, a lot of it's like, again, a lot of it's mental block and getting out of the mind into the body. If you know that you can do it by yourself on your own, like yeah. when you're masturbating and like, you know that you only have trouble when it's with a partner, then yeah. it's usually it's, it's something like psychological. Like the engine that could. It's like, I think exactly. I can. But it's I like, I know I can. I know I can. I have done this. I have done this. Yeah. But I, don't or, obsess over it because once you start obsessing yeah, over it, yeah, then that's, that's where true. the anxiety comes well, in. Well, that's the other thing too, is that people always told me, they were like, don't think about coming. They were like, just focus on the fun shit that's happening. And what you're actually exactly. doing. Yeah. We got a minute. Okay, Maybe let's cut then. it then. Leave and okay. come back on the same link. Yeah. Yeah. Solid. Can you hear me? <gasps> oh my God, you guys. Do you know who that is? Ooh, it's Charlotte. <laughs> and she's here. Ooh, do you hear how clear her voice is? A, because, because her polyps are gone. Yeah. And B, because we're both in Nanny's house. We are in Nanny's house. Sitting six feet apart. Because I won't go near her after being on a plane. Very smart. No one needs to hear me sing. I'm sorry. I, just because I got my throat fixed does not mean I'm a singer. I think it's a beautiful singing voice you have. Thank you. Couldn't, didn't you do soprano and alto? No, just high alto. Just high alto? Okay, sorry. That was me. 
Look at you. <laughs> I could have done it, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> what is that song? I don't know. Look at look me. at you. It just came to me. It sounds like Frozen too. You know, I never saw it. Uh, it's very bad. I remember that song though. Very bad. It was like a wannabe, let it go, but it didn't mm. make it. Anyhow. Yeah, anyhow, so Charlotte's here. We've just had a nice little sisterling catch up. Um, she wasn't here when we recorded the episode yesterday, but I thought I'd give you guys like a little little visit with her. A little taste. Um, and that we could talk about some of our favorite things. Obviously, you know, I'm not just back in New York. I am reunited with my Helix Sleep mattress. Thank goodness thank goodness i've been talking about helix so much lately actually really yeah i also don't have a helix where i've been quarantined Mm -hmm. and it's been at our parents horrendous sleeps i'm sweaty i feel it's it's both hard and too soft Mm. i don't even know how to describe this stupid Mm -hmm. bed i miss my helix i miss the like (laughs) <laughs> this is usually uh, how the it goes like me in Oregon being like I miss my helix really <laughs> yeah <laughs> well of course and I I keep we have these old beds also at home mm-hmm. and I keep trying to tell everybody in the home that we mm-hmm. need to buy new mattresses and helix is just the most amazing mattresses in the entire world um we we love I mean I was I was talking about that day that I fell asleep on your bed and that was when I fell in love. Everything changed. Everything changed. So, you guys, Helix Sleep has a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete and matches your body type and sleep preference to the perfect mattress for you. Yeah, so, like, every time I tell mom to get a Helix, she's like, well, what makes them so great? That's what she sounds <laughs> like, what by what the like. way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when are you coming home? What makes the mattress so great? But it's insane. And I keep describing, I'm like, Helix, okay, it has a quiz. It takes only two minutes to complete. It two matches your, your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect like, the perfect mattress mm-hmm. for you. It's not even just soft or firm, which it does. It's whether you sleep on your side or your back or your mm-hmm. stomach. Do you sleep hot? With Helix, like there's literally a specific mattress for each and every person's body. Mm-hmm. And splits them down the middle in case you share a bed with somebody with different preferences. Yeah, like what? That's so cool. That's I can't so even deal cool. with it. But they also, and I love this little fact, but like they design their mattresses with sex in mind. Yep. And they're all hybrid, so they have both foam and spring in them. I'm hoping a bang. <laughs> it's like, you better be ready if you're getting on a helix. I'm hoping a bang. <laughs> <laughs> just having springs and foam. Yeah, rather than just foam, because it keeps you sinking in too much, but it also gives you like that good bouncy time. Mm-hmm. That good, good bounce, bounce. Yeah. So the springs also are really quiet and they won't sag. Mm-hmm. Even, you know, during the non-sleep activities. Do you remember um, after you did the quiz, which mattress you were matched with? Not off the top of my head, but I saved it because I sent it to you, I think. Did, or I Was sent it, it the Helix Sleep Midnight? Because that's what mine is. Oh my you God, know, you guys hear that was... crinkling in the background? That's Grace eating plastic. You should take that away from her. No, she just likes to chew. But she doesn't. It's not like, a, no, it's too okay. big for her to swallow. Okay. <laughs> that's what she said. Hey. hey, please don't swallow my penis. <laughs> <laughs> please. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, no, I don't know if that had come out yet. I got it a long time ago. Mm. Um, yeah, that's this thing is they're always making new. Uh, no, that's not the thing. <laughs> no, but like you also I don't know why I'm saying like so much. I'm just getting excited about Helix and you don't have to take my word for it. They're. They were awarded number one Mm -hmm. best overall mattress pick of 2019 and 2020 by GQ and Wired. True. Insane. Um, Yeah. I took the Helix Sleep. No, that's not what it's called. Um, Yeah. So I have had the best time being back here. I've only been back for two nights and I sleep like a rock. I have my computer with fucking Fuller House on it and I just pass. You still watch that? I am still watching it. Um, Wow. Yeah. It's perfect to fall asleep to because like I don't care about it. Fuller. Fuller. To be clear. To be clear. The remake. I highly (laughs) recommend it. I (laughs) um, (laughs) But yeah, you guys, if you want a Helix sleep mattress and have the best sleep of your life, 
Just go to helixsleep.com slash howcome, take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. Uh, they have a 10-year warranty, and you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you will. Um, Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash howcome. That's helix, H-E-L-I-X, sleep.com slash howcome for up to $200 off. That's wild. Wild. That's even better than last season. I know. I'm going to need more mattresses They're and more pillows. Supportive of the podcast and our bodies. I love at them night. so much. I love them so much. Well, it was really great being here. Charlotte, it was so great to have you here, and I hope we will see you very, very soon. And now, I'm going to tell the companions about Dame Products. I always love talking about Dame because it is a sex toy company founded by vulva owners, um, woman-owned, making the next generation of vulva-tested, vulva-approved vibrators. Like, I can't think of how many companies were just making, like, straight up just dildos because it was guys and people with penises deciding, um, you know, what would pleasure a vulva. And that's not going to be as accurate as some people who actually have vulvas. And I love, I love Dame and what they stand for. And um, their toys are amazing. And they were, so they were founded by a sex educator and an engineering whiz. Um, Alex Fine, if you guys remember, is the sex educator. She was on an episode last season. Um, and they developed toys with the help of real humans and couples like you. All of Dame's vibrators and accessories are made with medical grade silicone, um, which I feel like a lot of companies used to not even think about the um, materials that were made. And if they were like safe for your body, these are safe for your body. Um, Dame products have earned glowing press from the New York Times, W Magazine, and many, many more. Um, they're engineered to bring your solo and coupled play to new heights. Like, yes, you can think of vibrators and sex toys as just solo stuff, but a lot of Dame stuff is intended for couples. Um, a lot of vulva owners are like, how can I come during penetration? They have a um, toy called Eva. Um, it kind of looks like a little bug with legs, um, but it's like tiny. And then it like goes in and it sits on your clit and it vibrates and you can have insertion at the same exact time, no hands, like literally look ma, no hands, maybe not look ma, like don't like we're having sex you don't need to watch me mom but like that I think is one of the number one questions we get is like how do I have orgasms while doing penetration and it's like well you have to be stimulating the thing that gets you off and for most vulva owners just straight up penetration doesn't work so to have something like Eva and Eva 2 that can just sit in in you um, makes it really really fun I've tried it um, my favorite current toy of theirs is Kip. I like just received it, I think like two months ago in Portland or maybe four. I don't know. We've become very good friends um, and it's like flat. It has like, it looks like a lipstick, but with like a flat surface. And I didn't realize that there were any vibrators with flat surfaces. And I feel like that is um, much more for me than any of the other vibrators that I've tried so far. Um, so whether you're in a couple looking for an extra boost where it matters or on a journey of self-exploration or you just want a new toy, um, Dame Vibrators will earn a spot on your nightstand and you'll love them. And all of their chargers are so easy. I just love this company. Um, and the best part is Dame offers hassle-free returns within 60 days. Uh, so your satisfaction is literally guaranteed. Uh, so for 15% off your first order, go to dameproducts.com slash howcome. That is dameproducts.com slash howcome, D-A-M-E-P-R-O-D-U-C-T-S dot com slash howcome. Dameproducts.com slash howcome. Dameproducts.com slash howcome for 15% off your order. Oh my God. Okay. Well, that was really fun having Charlotte stop by and say hello. Um, I think she's jealous because she hasn't received a damn product, but maybe I'll like send her one. Um, and yeah, let's get back to the episode. And maybe now that I'm in New York, maybe Charlotte should do more episodes. I don't know. If she's free. If she's free. That's it. She's a busy girl. But oh, we love her so much. Okay. Back to the episode. We good? Okay, hard, yes. Hard. Hard. Don't pronounce the R so much. I know, but I, I can't, 
<laughs> you can say hard with your accent, but if you're trying to say hard with my accent, you don't say that. Arr. We're not a pirate. Hard. Hard. Do you know what hard means? <laughs> hard. Yeah, I told him. Um, Gabrielle, do you know what? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, hard. Okay. Um, no, no one else does. Next. Apart from my country. It means I agree. Okay, Robin. <laughs> okay, hard. Um, next question. Is it non-consensual when you do something voluntarily for someone, but you aren't 100% into it? So this is a really good question. Yeah. Because I think this is yeah. a question I think a lot of, of people have kind can, of asked ourselves. Yeah, a lot, a lot of point. people can relate. Yeah. And so the technical answer, right, is if you're like consenting to something and it's not like an imbalance of power or something like that, then like it is consensual. But like what we, the kind of sex we want to be having is sex with enthusiastic consent. Exactly. Consents, Where, right? They, like there should be no coercion. Right. You know, like, I mean, because, and, and this is so tough because it's, what boys were taught is that no doesn't mean no. It means try harder. Right. Or not necessarily just boys. Like our culture is like, it's very like, ooh, like cat and mouse. You know, like we're not supposed to want it. So we're supposed to say no or whatever. Yeah. And then it gets very wishy-washy when like you are saying no to something. But then you're like, well, I could just say yes. Yeah, exactly. And those moments, like, I've had those moments where a guy has been trying and trying and trying. And I, just to make him stop, I've been like, okay, Ugh, fine. you can have sex with me for, like, four minutes. Like, I know it'll be only four minutes. Yeah. Hard. You know, it happens and, to everyone. But, and that's, like, the fucked up thing. But it's fucked up. And, like, I would never say, well, I don't know if I would never say, but I, I don't think I would ever call that man out and go, he assaulted me, you know, because I don't, right. I don't know if he knew the extent and, and I guess, but like by definition, yeah. that, that is considered a, like a form Consent. of assault in a way, like, but the line is like a little bit blurry when it comes to yeah. consent, but not enthusiastic. Yeah. It I is. I think, I think when people are thinking about, like, something that's, like, reportable, mm. like, most places you have to, like, be able to kind of... Well, first of all, I first of all, the systems for which we have to prove sexual assault are fucked up it's anyway. It's fucked up, yeah. And yes. based on misogyny, etc. cetera. Yeah. Um, and that people, people just don't, like, they want to protect that. Like, some people are like, right. be cool. Yeah. And it's like, what? But you're right. It is a blurry line. But the way that you, like, keep it from being a blurry line is looking for enthusiastic consent. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, you can also, I think a lot of people are afraid that, you know, asking permission for things during sex is going to be clunky mm -hmm. or awkward. Yeah. But you can make it sexy. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. Yeah. It takes practice, but like a lot of things that we're doing these days are going to take practice and unlearning because the way that we were all constructed was a little fakakta, like right. truly. And like, that's how culture shifts. I also think, and it'll be growing pains and it'll be uncomfortable. Like we're uncomfortable right now because that's where growth happens. Like yeah. literally. <clears throat> exactly. Um, but like it also, after you've had those encounters, what's the conversation like? I know we like are always talking about conversation, but like if I had said to that guy, hey, I really didn't want to have sex with you last night, I think that that guy would have been like, I am so sorry. Yeah. Right? Like I, I think that I, that personal guy in my experience, I think he genuinely was a really good guy. He maybe had like different game or whatever. Um, but if the the response is, but you wanted it, or whatever. It's like, yeah. well, no, I'm telling you that I didn't, you know, like, and I'm not accusing you right now. I'm having an afterthought, you know, and I've, I've had friends who have been assaulted by people and then they've brought it up the next day and they've said, I really didn't feel comfortable with that. And then the answer was what, yeah. you know, 
like and gaslighting mm. and that's yeah. the difference too yeah absolutely i think it's um, so blurry it's like so fuzzy and because yeah, there's a honestly, difference between a just like, yes and like a yes like i guess so like, like no one wants to do anything with an I guess so, or you shouldn't want to do anything with an You shouldn't want to do anything with an I guess so. Yeah. And I, I think that those conversations can actually, like, really improve relationships. You know, like, imagine if I had – I never saw that guy again because after I realized it, I was like, I feel like I kind of assaulted myself, and I don't like that he was the person involved yeah. in that. Um, and I don't, I don't want to be around it anymore. Like, I just separated myself. I wasn't – trying to have the conversation I should have just so that like campfire rule for the next girl he didn't do that campfire rule for himself he didn't do that you yeah. know like I, I think we really liked each other and we could have had like a nice relationship but I was like like really put off by it and if if I had gone back if if the conversation was like oh my god I would like to take things so much slower with you then you know it could have, yeah. everything could have been fixed. So it's on me for not saying anything. It's on him for doing it in the first place. It's on our whole society for saying that that's okay. But like, we're learning new things every day. Like, yeah, you we know don't that tweet know that's like, everything. normalize changing your opinion when you learn new facts. Like, preach. Yeah, absolutely. Don't be like, Oh, but in high school, yeah, I know you probably did fucked up shit in high school, but are you trying to defend that shit or are you trying to be better forward? Right. Literally, that's what that that grinds my gears so much when people are like, oh, but like we used it used to be OK or I used to do that right. or it it's used like, to be like, why no. are we so married to uh, why are we so married to ideologies? It's yeah. Crazy. Why are we stuck in the past? Like, don't we want to grow and have like a better future? I mean, guys started getting the most pissed when we told them you can't call bad stuff gay anymore. They were like, but I want to. We've been doing it since sixth grade. Oh, my God. Do you remember those commercials? No. Where? No. Yeah. The, there was the. It, what did they say? They were like, when you say that's so gay, do you mean what you say? Do you remember? The, the, oh, these yes, com- yes, yes, yes. It, I thought you meant there was like, a commercial that was like, Snickers, that's gay. Get a crunch bar. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I was like, damn. No, no. But no, it was like with like Hillary Duff and like other like mm. the height of the 2000s celebrities. No, but I want to find it. Do you mean what you say? And then like the Disney Channel. <laughs> That's right. So, yeah. Let's um, let's. I, I, and also, if you're like feeling that you're in one of those situations, you can speak up and be like i don't think i'm fully into this yet and you can also change or your mind how, what's a better way to say that because yet kind of also like is like i might get th- and and you might that's what's fucked up too Ugh. i don't know but what to like, do i think i think a better way to say it is i i'm not into this right now mm-hmm. yeah can we like pump because the you might never be into it or you might be into it an hour from now or yeah. never yeah. you know like or alternatively, you could start out being like into it and then be like, shit, actually, I'm not keen on this. Like, I, I don't yes. want to do this. Change your mind. Yes. And Say that is 100% no. percent valid. That is 100% valid. Like, there ha- sometimes you don't know if the sex is going to be scary. Yeah. You could until- be having a wonderful makeup. And then it doesn't even have to be scary or it could be uncomfortable it could be something that you just don't like and you did not know that that was going to happen going in and that's okay once they're inside Mm -hmm. you it doesn't mean like i live here now i have citizenship (laughs) it's like no i haven't even given you a green card literally (laughs) sorry yeah i want a green card no um i know (laughs) but like you can change your mind you guys stop going to canada and getting them sick it's not nice (laughs) Did you did you see that there was like some Canadian minister who minister in the government, I mean, mm-hmm. who was like proposing extending asylum to African Americans in Canada? Interesting. Wow. Yeah. Wow. What do you think of that? Yeah. 
I I would like my family to go to Canada. <laughs> so I think that that's like very gracious and amazing. And it's one of the things that like I feel like a lot of people have been like saying to certain people, it's not your fight. It's not, you know, your responsibility or whatever. And like as Jewish people, we know that people who it wasn't their fight took us in and right. took care of us. So, I mean, yeah, we don't really treat black people properly in this country. Um, yeah. Oh, I think Ethiopia, by the way, I should say that that was like something proposed. It's not law. Or okay. Anything, but I do sort of remember a few years ago reading something about like Ethiopia banning the United, because there's a lot of Ethiopian adoptees in mm-hmm. the United States. Mm-hmm. And I think Ethiopia stopped letting Americans adopt their citizens because they were like, that place is dangerous for black people. <laughs> mm, yeah. yeah, I have a feeling that our quotas increased a couple of years ago around about something time, like the time that that stuff was going down. Like we, they were allowing more to be adopted into like our country and stuff because the U.S. is the U.S. Trash. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I also, I want to say that like I have friends in Canada who are like, yes, we are definitely less racist against black people, but when it, but we indigenous but people, it, when it comes to indigenous mm. people, they really treat them like shit. And so it's not like it's racist. There's no, I don't think there's any country where racism is not, there's not an issue. There's not. Um, does that mean it's unsolvable? No. And if you are arguing that point, then you are anti-progress. Moving on. Back to sex. Um, oh, I love this question. <laughs> the the last one. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is there a way to prevent queefing? No. no there's not a way to prevent queefing. And it doesn't matter. At Honestly, all. some guys are, are or people who have sex with people who have vaginas are into that sometimes, you know? Honestly, all a queef is, a queef is when air escapes your vagina Mm. and it's not a fart. You don't have digestive gases in there. It doesn't smell. Mm -hmm. It's It's just just air air leaving your vagina. And it's like, it's like a compliment. You know, like it wouldn't have happened if you weren't in there. You know, it's just exactly. kind of like a chef's kiss. That's what Raina and Ashley call yeah. it, is the chef's kiss, right? Well, actually, you can also queef from like exercise or yes. any sort of physical yeah. activity. Oh, yes. That we used had to a, be um, the thing when I was a kid. All the girls would be like, oh my God, can you do it? And we'd like stick our legs up in the air and you'd see. Like, do it. Us too. Wait, you stuck your legs in the air? Yeah, like you'd lie on your back and you'd like um, push your legs up towards like the roof or whatever. And then, like, roll yourself down. That was us. Like, we used to do it like this. <laughs> like a bridge. No, this is all that. new to me. We didn't do that. Okay, so at camp, we would have, like, a chat. Like, we'd be like, who can queef, like, on command? And the girls oh would, God. like, sit down and go like this and go, like, and, like, suck up air. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun to see what your body can do. We would, like, lie on our backs and you'd kick your feet up. And then when you brought your legs, like, back down flat was when the air would be yes. released. So, like, similar thing, but yes. that was our way. I guess it's because we're Different in the Different position. Hemisphere. I will – I'll try yours. This I'll is all yours. news to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can really – you can, like, really suck up the air, really make it whoosh. You can. <laughs> <laughs> you really can. Um, you really buckets. can. <laughs> All right. Okay, I think maybe yeah. should we the move to category? our next? Yeah. The next category is actually. Do you want to announce this one, Gav? The next category is oral. Woo. Mm. Okay. So the first question is: Any tricks on how not to gag so much during a blowjob? Oh my God! Is this a Cosmopolitan article, circa two thousand three? <laughs> but no, seriously, I guess. <laughs> Deep th- hey, deep- we're Carrie Bradshaw. We are Carrie Bradshaw, except for we don't say that bisexuality is a one-way trip to gay town. Yes, that's a direct Oh, my blows. God. She, oh, that yeah, show. she did say that. So, yeah. Oh, God. No, we don't say I've that. I've always fancied myself more, more of a Miranda anyway. Miranda. <laughs> Honestly. Um, screw by erasure. Y- legit. Um, so any ch- tricks on how to not gag so much during a BJ? Okay. 
understandable that sometimes deep throating can be really fun for you and them. Um, but uh, if you are gagging, sometimes you might just want to take a break, start licking the shaft, start doing stuff with your hands, yeah. um, do a little licking under the frenulum. Do you guys know what the frenulum Ooh, is? Yes. It's that Lick little connection right under the head. It's like, oh, you know the best part of a lychee nut? <laughs> That's the frenulum. Okay. Very it's like specific. Ch- yeah. If you can't specific. find it, they can um, show you where it is. I promise. <laughs> yeah. Touch the balls, lick the balls. But also if you really, really, really want a deep throat, if that's something that gets you off and if it's not just somebody that someone's like f- trying to like fuck your neck. Um, <laughs> fuck your neck. Here. Fuck your skull. <laughs> What's the thing? Uh, fuck your mouth. <laughs> just your trying face? to fuck you in the face. Fuck your face. Your face. Yeah. Fuck your fuck face. Your no, face. fuck your neck. But they're really trying to fuck your neck. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, okay, but if you're really trying to deep throat because you want to and because you love it and because you're like, I I want, I, I need, I need to. to have a full dick in my mouth. Humming. Yes. Um, having like basic stuff in your stomach, like nothing that's going to like, like try not to eat like citrus or anything that like, what? Oh, <laughs> I thought you just said shut the fuck up. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> no, the fucking ambulance. And I was shit. like, you can just start talking if you don't want me to talk Shut anymore. The fuck up, Remy. <laughs> Citrus? What are you Never. talking about? I'm just saying things that bother my Jewish stomach. So Go ahead. That's it. I don't know. Anything that bothers your stomach. Um and also don't be stressed, I guess, because stress can sometimes make you puke. Wait, did you say humming? Yeah, humming. Mm. Humming I've while you're sucking the dick. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, I've never... Yeah, because I guess it relaxes your yeah. vocal cords. I no. tried it once it kind of and I thought sense, it was but like, fine. Mm-hmm. I kind of... I feel like I just open up my throat as if I'm taking like a pill. But honestly, I don't deep throat that much. Unless it's like, like a birthday. <laughs> 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 or like... Happy birthday. You graduated or something. <laughs> no, that was like me in high school. I don't mean like me today. I hope. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Sorry, guys. I've been reading way too many Twitter threads about Crystalia and Jeff Ross hitting on or dating girls in their teens. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I only would blow guys on their graduation when I was in high school and also a teen. Don't hook up with teens unless you're a teen. How about that? Yeah. Like, what is... I know we're not going to get into this fully because it requires a much more serious conversation and I've been, like, fucking enraged this week and I don't think I have, like, my thoughts totally collected. But I will say this. um, Stop defending normalcy around being attracted to teens. That's not normal. That's weird. That's something society did that's fucking weird. If you're an adult person and you're attracted to teens talk to somebody about that um but like you guys know that like 18 year olds exist right like you can be disgusting and still do it legally um but the fact of the matter is is they don't want to do it legally it's not a uh, just attraction thing it's a power thing um so yeah we're going to talk about that more probably next episode um i know i i did like a whole instagram rant about it um and I was even thinking of calling out some specific comedians who have been um, not sexual assaulters themselves, but apologists, and that keeps the whole thing going. Um, I've seen people this week put out jokes about victims instead of jokes about perps, and I'm very fucking disappointed. But again, we'll talk about that next time about Crystalia and Jeff Ross. Um, if you guys haven't heard about those stories, please Google them. Um, we intended to talk about them on the episode, but it is almost over. So we're probably going to do a few more questions and then we'll probably do another one of these episodes um, and answer more of your questions because there are way more categories and they're really good questions. Uh, so let's do a few more and then, yeah, we'll be back next week either with another one of these episodes or with a guest. Who knows? We'll see. All righty. 
Next question. Um, wait, do you have any deep, deep throating? Yeah, jokes? do you? I don't have a gag reflex. Oh, cool. I'll leave that there. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky for some. Um, you guys, his DMs are open. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice Jewish boys to the front of the line. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Ooh. Or nice N- Jewish girls. BJs for NJBs. BJs for NJBs. BJs for NJBs. Um, okay, next question. How to give a BJ when your jaw hurts all the time? Kind of similar question. Um, don't. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just do di- different. I mean, you, you cannot. Use your hands. But use, use your, your you hands. Could not. You could not. Yeah. Or you could use your hands more. You use your hands. Spit on your hands. Switch uh, it up. But if it really hurts, just don't. Just yeah. Don't. yeah. Like, if it- My jaw hurts all the time. And I'll usually just resort to hands or like licking the sides or like the frenulum. Usually mine will hurt the next day. Ooh. Next day? Yeah. Next day, um, sex pains can either be like really good or like really bad that you have like flashbacks. And then you're <laughs> yeah. like, oh, this was not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> not a vibe. <laughs> but I feel like if your jaws <laughs> hurting, don't put it through anything that's going to like aggravate it like you can switch it up and do other things like you said also just like i know that this is off to, topic like, recuperate right but i just can't imagine enjoying s- head from someone who was in pain you know yeah. like every yeah. time a guy has been like my neck hurts i'll be like get get a pillow get up Get a pill or get up. Yeah. Or like, come, <laughs> no. come from the Remy's side. Like, no, no, no. You're staying down. No, there. no. Like, no. Come, come from <laughs> the pillow. side. Like change your, change your angle, you know, like, or like just stop or whatever, you know, or like, just stop. Yeah. 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 Like there are different ways to do it. And like, surely it's not pleasurable for either party if someone's in pain. Like, hopefully. <laughs> well, hopefully. Depends on the kink. Unless you're into that. Yeah. We don't kink shame. Depends on right. the Right, unless you're into that and that's part of it. But if it's an uncomfortable pain. the other pain, person is, is in agreements with it. But if it's yes. just like. Uncomfortable, yeah. painful, just switch it up. Yeah. Um, I think this next one is interesting. Mm-hmm. The ultimate guide to oral sex for men to perform on women. Mm-hmm. Okay, first of all, make us feel comfortable. A lot of us are not even comfortable receiving because yes. um, society has told us that our vaginas are so gross to look at and smell and taste and, like, why would you want to do that? Um, so first be like, you are so hot. I'm so happy to be down here. I love your pussy. I love your face. I love your legs. Tut- like, make it a full body experience. Robin is settling in. Okay. For sure. Make it a little tantric it's not just you go straight for the vagina that is my biggest pet peeve is when you're fooling around with somebody and then they immediately like just like go straight there go or whatever without like like touching the rest of your butt touch their legs touch their butts squeeze their butts and their bodies then go down kiss the legs whoa then we're tingling (laughs) then let's Get some Kiven method involved, okay? And that is oral from the side um, yes. so that the vulva owner's legs don't have to be splayed out because um, a lot of us like to have to tuck our butts under and, like, link our feet together. So if, like this. So if you can alleviate us having to spread our legs and come from the side, we love that. I mean, I, I love it personally. Um I feel and like it would also be more comfortable for the person giving it because they're not like. That's what I'm. Yeah. It's more comfortable yeah. because their neck doesn't hurt. They're coming at it from above and for their arm. And this is part of the ultimate guide. Then it has the positioning to go inside the vagina and stimulate like the come hither while licking from the top. And then it's like all of the good feelings. And maybe you even still have a hand on their butt. <gasps> Because you have two hands. That's sometimes. my guide. Now you know how to go down on me. <laughs> oh, and then, and then just Noted. do it for like 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> just keep going. <laughs> I feel like that's it. Like, just make the person you're going down on comfortable because mm-hmm. if they're not having a you good time. You can involve toys too. Yeah. Like, communicate about it. If you start off it. with a toy... 
that like you know that they like like I really like having that to like loosen me up because then I'm like okay I'm already heightened now it's like you kind of yeah. come in for the alley oop <laughs> you just mm. come in and finish it off you know the alley oop yeah it's like one yeah. guy throws it up the other one dunks it it's yeah. like you're the dunk <laughs> I would Remy's say also basketball coach session there yes some people have like a, a tendency it's like if you see that like the Volvo owner is like really enjoying it. Keep don't going. Change, don't change it up. Yeah, yeah. don't switch yeah. it up. Like if, if you see that they're close, close do the just same be consistent. Thing. Yeah. Keep going. Actually, like, I think that's more important than anything I've said is when you're doing the right thing and they say that it. feels good, keep doing it. And also, I don't remember what comic this was. It was a male comic. It's a really funny joke. And it's about like how he's like, most guys, when a girl says, ooh, that feels good, we think it means she's coming. She's actually saying, this is the first time I felt good this whole time. Yeah. Keep doing that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like you finally found it. Keep, Keep going. Going. Yeah. But usually that's like the point where they're like, oh, okay, cool. I'll do like a cool maneuver and like finish her up real quick. Right. And it's like, that's not. Right. Also, if you have a vulva, like, don't be afraid to tell someone what you like either. Totally, totally. Yeah. And and don't be afraid to ask, is this good? Do you like this? What are you thinking? You know, whatever. Like, do you mind if I go down here? Um, suction on the clit. Yeah. Yeah. If you can do that, that's lovely. Um, but also, every vulva is different. So, like, right. you have to experiment with... Um, how you're rubbing the consistent or like the pattern, pressure. the pressure. Yeah. All that stuff that we talked about with Vanessa in episode four this season. Um, yeah. I, I think go back to Emily Morse's episode and Vanessa Marin's episode. I think those Great are really episodes. good too. Um, I'm trying to think of like the ultimate guide. I don't want to leave any. Oh, include anal. Like, yeah. Anal all, play. Yeah stimulate the thing if is they're into it, it's if they're into first. yeah it's like it's a smorgasbord it's like whatever uh they <coughs> like the best put those things together yeah in uh in and a ask nice them cocktail. what they like ask mm -hmm. them what they like to be able to give them that perfect mm -hmm. cocktail do you guys remember that scene from friends where monica's talking about how to give Woman seven. orgasm. Seven. 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 That's what I was a thinking one, of when you were. A one, two, a one, three. two three. A three, two, four, <laughs> two. That's what I was thinking two, of when you were two, explaining just before. A five. Yeah, but it's literally <laughs> like maybe maybe even if like you, you take um, inventory of your erogenous zones before. Like a yeah. lot of people will just be like, okay, like what's the pussy centric part of oral? But it's like. It's not all about that. Like, I like to be kissed on my neck before or, like, in the thigh, you know, like. And I feel like everyone has a different the build sort up. of erogenous zone. Yeah. Hit the zones like checkpoints yeah. and then go back. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And if they say it's good, keep doing it. Keep Don't going. Stop. Yeah. And right. also what would be really hot is just showing your willingness to, like, be down there for a while yeah like, yes enthusiastic I, head is the best head yeah i think the best thing i could hear is if somebody was like i'm gonna set a timer for 45 minutes and then just go down on you okay just you just come right then and there yeah then i'll come right then <laughs> yeah they say they'll set a timer and that's what gets <laughs> Remy going yeah um okay. i feel like we covered the next one kind of thing I think that we have given a lot of good information, answered a lot of great questions so far. So I think maybe we should just like leave it there. I think right. this is one of those episodes okay. that like a bunch of people are going to send to the people they're hooking up with and be like, hey, could you like listen to this? Because it's chock full. Yeah. Um, and because it's chock full, again, we didn't get to um, a lot of the sexual assault conversations and what's going on in the world of comedy that I wanted to get to. So if you want to see that unfiltered, I'm not ready uh, for public life yet because first I think I'm going to um, confront the people on a person-to-person -person basis instead of just calling them out 
on the podcast and see if I can appeal to their more logical senses that way. And then if I cannot, I'll blow them the fuck up. Um, but if you don't have the patience for that, go to patreon.com slash how come we'll have a whole like unedited video where we had the conversation. Actually, I just cut it out because I was like, you know, it's not really mature to call them out before calling them, you know, I mean, I like asked a lot of people and they were like, don't, don't blow up people unless you're willing to talk to them one on one. And I think that's good advice. Um, and so I'm going to do that. But if you're a loyal patron and you're the type of person that's not going to tell this person that I'm mad at them, sign up for patreon.com slash how come right now. And I'll tell you right now who I'm mad at. Um, but don't make it public yet because we want to be able to convince them to start being a good one. You know, maybe look at things a different way. I don't know. And um, yeah, can you guys tell everybody where they can find you online if you want to be found? You can visit my website and blog at nefeshwellness.com. That's N-E-F-E-S-H wellness.com. Uh, or you can follow me on Instagram at underscore lotus dot revlon r-e-v-l-o-n okay rob go uh you guys can find me on instagram robin r-o-b-y in kennedy with three n's just because it wasn't taken you can always follow me at remy casimir follow the podcast at how come you guys rate review subscribe we need you we need you we need you if you like post about us we love that we've ugh. Oh my God, loving the front facing videos of girls just being like, yeah, I had a hard time coming and then I listened to this podcast. I'm like, hey, brave bitch. Um, that amazes me. But if you are not that bitch yet, and a lot of us are not because we started from very, um, I don't know, I don't want to say inexperienced, but I myself started from an inexperienced place. So give yourself time for that. But what you can do for us is rate, review, subscribe. Leave us a nice review. It really helps us out um, and it helps us get better guests. And we love that. Um, so if you want to hear extras, again, go to patreon.com slash how come. Uh, I have a feeling we're going to put up a shit ton of merch this week. So go to howcomepodcast.com if you want to check that out. Robin, um, Gabrielle, did you finish? I did. Oh, so many times, Dad. Like, you don't even understand. Remy, did you finish? I think I could keep going, so I think we should do another one of these. I mean, next week okay. though. I'm Kane. Uh, we have a guest next week. Oh, we do. Oh, okay. So then we'll do another one of these eventually. Right on. But next week we have an exciting guest, um, and I love you guys. And love thank you. Guys. you. Um, yay! See you next time yeah. on How Come. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. We did it. It's not you. It's me. I try so hard to finish honestly They say you'll know When you go all the way from A right down to O Oh no I think that I still got a ways to go Oh low I'm sick of this and I have got to know How come? How come? How come I can't achieve? How come I can't achieve? I'm rolling up my sleeves. I'm rolling up my sleeves. Oh, baby, I believe these guests can help. Cause I can't do it by myself. I wanna just.